welcome everybody to this inaugural event for the Beat the Heat Plant and Tree Program. It is an amazing opportunity for the City of Columbia. It was provided by the USDA Forestry uh, Program and Arbor Day Foundation is our uh, grant manager. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce our mayor, Mayor Rickman, uh, to talk a little bit about this opportunity. Mayor. Thank you, Brian. Good morning, everybody. How we doing? You know, another great day in the city of Columbia, and I, I want to welcome everybody on behalf of the entire city council, our city manager, Teresa Wilson, uh, as well, as we're here to launch Beat the Heat, Plant a Tree, as was mentioned by Brian, a partnership with Columbia Green. And this is a five-year program that, to distribute 1,500 trees in just as 40 areas. And the program, as mentioned, was funded by the USDA through the Arbor Day Foundation, which is great for us since we are been a tree city now for 45 years. Um, but what's really exciting is this, this program comes on the heels of the 10,000 trees that were completed in 2019 across our city. But as we continue to be the longest running Tree City in South Carolina. I'm also very proud that we're the first LEED certified gold city in South Carolina, which means a lot because that only shows our commitment to our community, but it shows our commitment to our environment. And, and it also really is a tool today in recruitment. Uh, people who are looking to relocate residents, businesses, and other places are looking for communities that are thinking forward, who are thinking about not only how we enhance business and neighborhoods, but how we enhance our environment and how we protect the natural assets that we have in our community. You know, for a long time, we were called famously hot. I think we're relatively cool because we keep doing programs like this, and we're going to continue to, to make these investments. Um, but we're also not just looking at taking advantage of just these type of, of grants and opportunities, but really looking forward to beautifying our city. One of the things that we've seen since the COVID really hit and been apparent is that we need to make a larger investment across our city for beautification, not only in our roadways, but in the entrance ways. We have nine entrance ways in our to, into our community, and we want people to feel invited. We get 16 million visitors a year here but only five and a half spend the night. So how do we increase that number? How do we get it to seven million or nine million or 10 million, which will really bolster our economic um, community, the impact that it has on our small businesses, on our restaurants, but our tourism, as we make the connections with our greenways and others, all of these will be opportunities for us to advance and be um, what I would like to see is the number one city in South Carolina, not based on population, but based on quality of life. And when we finish these greenways and these beautification projects, you'll have 27 miles of, of walkways across our riverfront, all the way from KC to West Columbia, to Lexington, to Armo, to Richland County, and, and all the way up to the dam and back incredible opportunities that we're having here, but we only can do this together. So as you know, for the next five years, there'll be 19 more events like this one. They'll be held on a quarterly basis, and we'll, we'll be doing this to make sure that we get these trees out and we get them in the appropriate. So please tell your friends, your neighbors, your neighborhood businesses, when you go to work or you go to church, please tell folks about the opportunity that we have before us. This is a great way for us to improve the value of our communities, to improve the quality of life, and to enhance the beautification across our city by planting a tree and also helping us beat the heat. You know, we did a heat study in 2022 that put us at like 18% higher in heat. So as we start looking at reflective painting on roadways and planting more canopy trees across the city, looking at our entranceways and our medians, where can we take advantage to reduce the heat that's generated from all the asphalt that we have? This will make a dent. It will help us do that, but we can't do it without you. So let's do this together. And thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Mayor. I would also like to introduce Austin Sagas. He is the president of Columbia Green and our partner in this grant. Thank you, 
Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Austin Sagas, and I am president of Columbia Green. I was asked to uh, give a high-level description of uh, Columbia Green, who we are and what we do, um, but instead of talking about who we are and what we do first, I'd rather talk to you about why we do what we do in the community. First of all, we believe that every neighborhood deserves to be beautiful, that life is better when it's made in the shade, and that we don't know what it's like, what it's truly like to live in Columbia until we embrace nature in our community. In December of 2023, a husband and wife got out of their car and made their way to a registration table. They were coming to pick up a free tree at a Columbia Green Tree Giveaway event that we had hosted last year. It was actually behind the Pelicans off of uh, North Main Street, to be exact. The couple, set, uh, the couple got out of their car, uh, made their way to the registration table, and was greeted by a um, Columbia Green staffer. And the staffer was saying, oh my gosh, I bet you are so excited. And the woman began to tear up and say, yes, yes I am. I'm planting this tree in honor of my mother who had passed away four months ago. Now unknown to her, the Columbia Green staffer who was helping her had also lost her mother about a year prior. Tears were shed, hugs were given, and a tree was planted. Memories were made, a story was born, and a legacy took root. The community came together, bonds were strengthened, and the future was made just a little bit greener. Team, we are here today to talk about planting trees. And some of you might think that this is a boring exercise. Uh, some of you might be concerned about the amount of work, and most definitely the people who are not here today question, what's even the point? It's just a tree. Well, to that husband and wife who picked up an average native tree, where there are so many just like it in the world, to them, that is the most important tree in the world. Very few things in this life last as long as our canopy trees. So yes, it is just a tree, but like with so many other things in life, if you choose to involve others or to be inspired, you're planting something more than a tree. You're planting memories, growing a legacy, seeding stories, and helping so much more than just yourself, your electric bill, or your back porch. For myself, in about two weeks, I'm expected to see my first child come into the world. <laughs> and this winter, I plan to plant several trees for my family. I'm planting a maple tree in honor of my baby girl, a tree that will hopefully grow alongside her. It will be hers to have, maybe water, and one day climb. And no doubt in my mind, to everyone in our backyard, she's gonna be saying that that is her tree. I plan to plant the tree that my wife and I stood under for our engagement photos, a tree that now unknown by all of you today is a symbol of our love and our marriage. So, yes, these are just trees, but having the relationship with them has made my life more enriched and connected. And I hope you get inspired to plant a tree this fall. This relationship building and community strengthening is what Columbia Green is all about. Our mission is to optimize the environment to enhance the quality of life for greater Columbia. Because we believe that every neighborhood deserves to be beautiful. That's why for over 30 years we have funded community grant projects to our fellow citizens. Today, this year's grant cycle is now open and feel free to visit columbiagreen.org to learn more about our grant program. We have found that through these grant programs, these communities that have received grant funding grow closer together. They connect with each other and build something greater than themselves and their yards. We believe that life is better when it's made in the shade. And that's why during COVID, with the help of community partners, we managed to plant hundreds of trees in communities lacking canopy cover. And we also gave those trees more meaning. Not only did we plant trees, but we asked neighborhoods to find people in their community that we can honor alongside them. The work done then has helped pave the way for the work done that we're going to do today. You know, I don't know about you, but I've never been to a city and thought, you know what the problem is? They have too many trees. You know what's annoying? I haven't seen the sun since I've got here. Normally, it's the other way around. Normally, the cityscape needs life. And being from South Carolina, 
I don't need to tell you how much the sun loves us. <laughs> so yes, indeed, life is better when it's made in the shade. And finally, we believe that we don't know what it's like to truly live in Colombia until we embrace nature in our community. It's not that we love nature per se, we love people, we love community, and loving nature is part of that. As communities grow, sometimes nature appears to be the thing that's holding us back. That tree's in the way, the rock needs to be moved, or this field looks ugly. Well, it's also true that some of the greatest communities in the world have figured out how to celebrate nature as part of their home. Singapore has one of the most beautiful gardens on the planet. Florence, Italy is arguably the most beautiful city ever founded. And Disney World would not be the happiest place on earth if they didn't have their canopy and gardens to help make it so special. So let's get excited, let's get passionate. Let's strengthen and deepen our relationship with nature and each other. And if you wanna keep the momentum going or be part of something greater, consider joining Columbia Green. We're always in need of more help, more leadership, and more ideas. Once again, I'm Austin Sagas, president of Columbia Green, and I am incredibly thankful to be here with all of you today. Thank you, Austin. Uh, last, I would like to introduce Jessica Fuhrer. She is the representative of Benedict, who was kind enough to offer this facility for us to hold this inaugural event. Jessica. Thank you, Brian. I'm gonna put the mic down a little bit for my short self, okay. <clears throat> um, so, we are really excited to partner with the City of Columbia on hosting this Beat the Heat kickoff event. Um, we know that as, the cli as our climate warms, our cities are becoming more vul vulnerable to impacts like extreme heat and intense storm events. Anyone that's been any time in Columbia knows about these things. Um, but um, the science shows that they're uh, getting more intense and frequent. Um, and often lower income communities are the hardest hit by these effects. Um, policies like redlining going back to the 40s and lack of public investment in low income areas have led to significantly less tree cover than in wealthier neighborhoods, and this is a factor across the United States, um, leading to greater heat exposure on these hot, hot days. Um, so this initiative is empowering residents to push back on that extreme heat by increasing the green space in their own neighborhoods. Um, this will help with not only the heat impacts, but also uh, we know that bringing more nature into our built environments um, is good for our mental health and makes a neighborhood a more beautiful place to work, live, and play in. Um, it also improves air quality, so trees um, uh, take in uh, CO2 and breathe out oxygen, the exact opposite of what us and all of our cars and machines are doing. So it's, uh, it has an air quality benefit um, and even helps regulate stormwater by taking it up through the tree roots and also prevents soil erosion. So there's so many benefits to planting a tree. Um, <clears throat> uh, also, today's event also serves to deepen our partnership with the City of Columbia in the area of climate resilience. Um, for the past three years, we've been involved in a public-private partnership around the Benedict Area Bioretention Project. Um, if you walk or drive down the uh, streets in, in this neighborhood, um, down on Laurel Street and other places, um, you will see uh, bioswales. And so these are, they just look like they're streetscaping, but they really have an ulterior motive, and that's to control stormwater. Um, and so, and improve the water quality. Um, so they um, absorb stormwater, allow it to slowly infiltrate and absorb nutrients and, um, and improve the water quality in the Smith Branch and the Broad River. So if you walk around our neighborhood, you can see that as well. Um, so we've been able to partner with the city. Um, some of our uh, environmental engineering students completed their senior design projects under um, the, the supervision of these engineers from the city. Um, and um, they've also uh, taken us on field trips to see some of these, these uh, installations around town. Um, and so that's a great opportunity for our students to learn uh, the design principles and the contracting and construction process of public infrastructure. Um, so all that to say, whenever we get a chance to partner in the, with the city on these mutually beneficial projects, we're, we're really happy to do it. Um, I also see this project as a chance to involve our students in uh, climate science and advocacy. Um, this gives us an opportunity to um, to involve students in tracking the long-term effects of uh, increased creek cover in our neighborhood. 
and that will help to kind of bring the big weighty subject of climate down to a tangible, um, manageable things that we can that we can discuss, and also to work toward positive change. Um, that's the heart of education is really sparking people to work toward positive change in their in their whenever their discipline is. Um, so that's that's what we do here every day here at Benedict. So this is another opportunity to engage in that. Um, and so I just want to thank everyone for coming today. It's wonderful to see you all, and we're really excited to, um, to be a part of this project.